Max usually suck at gaming, right? Well, take a look at this. This is a triple A rated game released just 12 months ago, running flawlessly on a fanless M1 MacBook Air. It's not using Rosetta 2 or Parallels or any other emulation software. It's running natively on an Apple Silicon Mac. And this begs the question, after all of this time, is gaming on Macs finally possible? Can us Mac fans finally stop getting bullied by the PC Master Race because our fancy laptops can't game? Well, let's find out. So what I want to do in this video is show you this new game in more detail. It's called Resident Evil Village and it's a brand new AAA rated game by a company called Capcom. It's the first game to be fully optimized for Apple Silicon and take advantage of Apple's Metal 3 API for game developers. I'm going to be playing this game on an M1 MacBook Air to see what the performance is like, and also on the most powerful Apple Silicon MacBook currently available, the 16-inch M1 Max MacBook Pro. And I'll also compare the performance with a Windows gaming laptop to see how the Mac stacks up. So let's first take a look at how the game runs on my base model M1 MacBook Air. But first, a quick word from the sponsor of this video, Exter. Are you looking at replacing that crusty 15 year old folding wallet you've been carrying around? If so, you're in the right place. Exter have designed the world's slimmest and smartest wallet with built in RFID protection. They can hold up to 15 cards plus some cash and you can access all of your cards at the click of a button with their signature quick card access. And you can easily track your wallet's location with either a built in AirTag holder or Exter's solar powered tracking device. Each Exter wallet is made from environmentally friendly and high quality materials like Italian leather, space grade aluminum and carbon fiber. It's basically the James Bond of wallets. So make sure you check out the link in the description below and use code CREATEDTECH at the checkout for up to 25% off all orders or 35% off above $200 plus a free cash clip from the 10th of November to the 27th of November for the Black Friday sale. So this is my base model M1 MacBook Air, just with eight gigabytes of unified memory and also just a seven core GPU. What I'll do first of all is I'll jump into the settings and I'll just show you what I'm working with because this game is obviously brand new and this is a fanless MacBook Air. Uh, so you're not gonna be getting the best performance out of it. So you will have to sacrifice some quality and you know, drop the FPS down. But if you do that, it definitely is playable. So if I jump into the display, you can see I'm using the recommended preset, which is gonna basically bump the graphical settings down quite a bit. Um, I've also got a resolution of 2048 by 1152. Now, ideally I was playing this on 1080p and 1200p before, but for some reason that's not coming up. And the rest of the settings here I'll show you. Uh, I've got the frame rate set to 30 FPS and I've also got VSync turned on. I'll explain why in a second. And then if we come down here, I have everything either off or set to medium slash low. Again, you're not gonna be getting a super high FPS on this game. So if we come back here, I'll load up one of my save games. So now that we're in game, as you can see, we're getting a pretty decent result. Now we are locked to 30 FPS. And the reason why I've turned VSync on and I've also locked the frame rate to 30 FPS is because if I didn't have VSync turned on and I didn't have that frame rate target. I can get to around 45, sometimes 50 FPS, um, but it also introduces a lot of screen tearing and dropped frames. And it was really noticeable while playing, especially during the action scenes. So by turning on VSync and setting that 30 FPS target, yeah, like you're not gonna be hitting 60 FPS on this particular game, which is a shame because obviously the screen is capable of doing 60 FPS because it's a 60 Hertz panel. 30 FPS is not that bad. And like I always say, if you're just playing a single player game and it's not like a hardcore Twitch shooter like CSGO or Valorant, for example, 30 FPS, as long as you're not getting any dropped frames or anything like that, really isn't that bad. So walking through the village here, again, we're pretty much locked straight to 30 FPS. No dropped frames, no screen tearing. Uh, if I move around here, you probably can't tell on the camera um, but in real life, this is pretty good. Now, if you want to download and play this game, it is available on the App Store, which is kind of annoying because it's also on Steam, which currently has a sale, but the Steam version doesn't work. So you have to go into the App Store, 
purchase it, download it. And Resident Evil Village is supported on macOS Monterey, the previous version of macOS. But by upgrading to macOS Ventura, you'll be able to access the new Metal FX upscaling feature, which comes in really handy for playing at higher resolutions. You can also play the game on any Apple Silicon Mac, as you can see on the screen now. And if I jump into TG Pro for a second to have a quick look at the temperatures, you can see here the performance cores of the CPU are hitting around 85 to 90 degrees Celsius, whereas the GPU is hitting close to 90 degrees. So you will get some thermal throttling here, like you do with basically all MacBook Airs. But again, this is the weakest Apple Silicon Mac. So the fact this is even running at all, I think, in my opinion, is pretty cool. Now, before I get into the M1 Max MacBook and Windows gaming laptop comparison, let's quickly talk about some relevant background information here. Now, there are a couple of reasons why Macs have traditionally not been very good at gaming. First, it's a matter of target market. I mean, Mac users make up only a very small percentage of the personal computing market. About 15% compared to 75% for Windows-based computers. Macs also do not support graphical APIs like Vulkan or DirectX, which is what pretty much every modern game runs on. In recent years, Apple has instead created their own API known as Metal. The problem is that it can be costly and time-consuming for game developers to adapt their game to use Metal, and even if they do, it only unlocks an additional 15% of the marketplace. Yeah, generally not worth it, right? Sometimes this takes millions of dollars and months of work, and there are quite a few posts out there from game developers going into more detail on just how complicated and lengthy this process is. Now, you might remember during WWDC 2022, Apple announced their new API known as Metal 3. Metal 3 has a number of really cool new features like Metal FX upscaling or the fast resource loading API. Now, I'll go into all of this in more detail in a separate video. But essentially, this is Apple saying to game developers, hey, we just made it way easier for you to translate your games into the Metal API and allow them to be played on Macs. Apple also partnered with Capcom to bring a pretty popular AAA rated game, which is Resident Evil Village, the one we've just played, across to the Mac to sort of pave the way for other games. And as you can see, it works pretty well. So what about the most powerful MacBook currently available? How well does this game run on it? Well, here's a 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro with 32 GPU cores and 32 gigabytes of unified memory. And here's a Windows gaming laptop with the latest Intel 12900H CPU and RTX 3070 GPU, all packaged into the Apex 15X Evo from Aftershock. Now, all of this testing was done on the same external monitor because both laptops have different built-in screens and resolutions, and both laptops have the exact same graphical settings enabled within the game. As you can see, the gaming laptop is performing much better, achieving around double the FPS that the Mac is able to output. There are also a couple of dropped frames and some screen tearing every now and then on the Mac, compared to the gaming laptop, which is completely smooth. And note that these graphic settings are close to maxed out on both systems. So it's a pretty impressive performance from both as and this is a AAA rated game. It's just 12 months old. But when I jump into the settings on the Mac and enable Metal FX upscaling and set it to quality, there's an increase in FPS and the overall picture looks better as well. But still, performance is just not as good as the Windows PC. And before you ask, yes, I did try setting Metal FX upscaling to performance, but this resulted in a significant decrease in image quality, which I really didn't like. However, just like the M1 MacBook Air, when I enable VSync and set the frame rate target to a specific setting, in this case 60 FPS, I was really impressed with the results. I was able to run the game at 1440p at some of the highest settings and achieve a pretty much rock solid 60 FPS with almost zero dropped frames or screen tearing. Honestly, it was a really enjoyable experience. And although it wasn't as smooth as the gaming PC with its high FPS, I, mean, I had zero complaints. 
especially for a single player game like Resident Evil. Obviously you can bump the resolution down to 1080p or reduce the graphical settings and get a consistent 100 plus FPS. It just really depends what experience you want. For me, I prefer higher quality graphics and a locked 60 FPS for single player games like this, but FPS and gameplay experience don't tell the whole story. So let's take a look at power consumption and thermals. After almost an hour of playing, the M1 Max CPU was at around 75 degrees Celsius and the GPU cores at around 78, which is pretty cool. And you can also see that the fans are only at 3,500 RPM, which is around half of their maximum speed. The gaming laptop, however, obviously ran very hot with the 12900H CPU, throttling at around 95 degrees Celsius and the RTX 3070 Ti GPU sitting at a toasty 86 degrees. Not to mention the fans were also really loud. The GPU is also sucking up around 130 watts and combined with the CPU using about 40 watts and the rest of the components, the total power draw at the wall was 220 watts. Compared to the M1 Max, which did this test completely unplugged from its charger, it's so efficient that it's able to draw all the power it needs from its battery. Now, there's so many more comparisons and tests I can do here, like underclocking the gaming laptop to the same wattage as the M1 Max, fan noise, tweaking different settings, etc. But that's for another video, and when more Metal 3 games are actually available, like No Man's Sky coming out later this year, because Resident Evil was literally just released a few days ago. So I don't think it's fair right now to do a full comparison of both. I just wanted to show you a quick look at how it runs. So does this mean that Macs are now good at gaming? Well, possibly. I don't think we'll see performance quite as good as a proper gaming system with Intel or AMD CPUs and RTX GPUs with ray tracing and optimizations like DLSS and external monitor G-Sync, for example. And I also don't believe a lot of game developers will be convinced to dedicate resources to making games for Apple Silicon Macs, even with Metal 3. But this is a really impressive first step and proves that proper AAA rated gaming is possible on Macs now. And I think the future has the potential to be very impressive especially with the unified memory ability of Apple Silicon Max, meaning the GPU can access all of the available RAM. So yeah, really impressive stuff. I mean, I personally didn't think that we would see uh, a AAA rated game running natively on Apple Silicon, at least for another couple of years. So it's really cool to see that Apple is now kickstarting this process. And who knows, maybe in five to 10 years, you'll be able to buy a dedicated gaming Apple MacBook.